Right, our series started off on uh, over on what was described as the cradle of golf. So we've now <laughs> arrived at our home of golf. We're in Fife. Absolutely. What can you tell me about Fife? Other than, and don't forget, this series is all about the, the less obvious. The less obvious. Um, well, the the less obvious facts about Fife is that you know we've got fifty fantastic golf courses in this little part of Scotland, um, ranging from the marquee courses. Yeah. Everyone's heard of the old course yes. and uh, um, King's Barns, um, all the way down to the hidden gems. Yeah. Um, and we're standing here at London Golf Club, um, one of the most famous links courses in Scotland. Yeah. Uh, just down to the west of us, you've got uh, Burns Island, you've got Kinghorn. Uh, yeah. A bit further west to uh, Dunfermline, you've got Dunfermline Golf Course, Petrivi. Um, I mean, there's so many golf yeah, courses. Yeah, many of the names from. you just reeled off again. I wouldn't be that familiar with either, so that's uh, well, interesting. Yeah. It's, it's one of the things that we, we we frequently are doing is trying to make sure that the golfer uh, who's coming to this part of Scotland uh, needs to make sure that they do their homework first to understand yes. what is there for them to go and enjoy. Yeah. And uh, so, uh -huh. so yeah. Well, well, let's hope we can showcase. So we've got three to showcase. We're playing, so it's London today. Uh, we're going to play the Duke's course tomorrow, and then we're off to Crail's newer course, uh, yeah. sort of 20 years old over at Crail. That's right, and all within, what, about half an hour's uh, drive time from, from here? Yeah, it's perfect. I mean, I think from top to St Andrews down to this London links, again, probably about 30 minutes. It's 30 minutes, and yeah. uh, then about another 20 minutes to the, uh, the, the far west of the county. Yeah, yeah. Um, so all, all very, very close. Well, we look forward to uh, visiting, seeing what we find in London mm -hmm. and then the next few days and uh, let's hope this weather continues as well because I believe this is the uh, the sunny coast as well. <laughs> Another one. <laughs> Another one. Yeah, the sun always shines where you are, obviously. <laughs> yeah, um, well, let's hope so. And it's... Uh, uh, we, we still we still get people who come to uh, to five to play golf and they get disappointed because the weather's too good. Too, too good, right? Well, we won't be complaining about that. This is perfect weather. Right, tee shot is gone, and uh, I've got to say the first thing you met with is views from the minute you walk out the car park. Sometimes it takes a while for a course to open up, but not at London Links. You get them views straight away. And if you look out to the rock into the sea, that's a seal sitting on there waiting to greet us. I mean, the first hole was a, a good golf hole green sat on the horizon and let me tell you the greens are slick but look at that beautiful not the best first tee shot see what we can do with this that's gone for miles well, you pick it up off there there's a that's good. I don't know how far down it's gone, but uh, you don't get much better than that from me. But what a golf hole that is. I've got away with murder here because just before I went out, the pro said to me, he gave me a course guide and he said, make sure you read this because there's a few hidden burns that you won't necessarily see from the tee box. And I did what every wise golfer does and I ignored every word he said, hit that tee shot off, thought it was fantastic. And then this is the burn that you don't see off the tee. Nobody would take driver in their right mind I did, and I got away with absolute murder because I'm in position A. But realistically, what it deserved to be was in there. I love this place already. Yeah, I haven't even got past the second green yet. Maybe because I just got lucky. Um, but anyway, I hope from that camera there you can see just how much movement is, uh, is in that fairway between me and the flagstick. Get up get up and that's just killed it just needed to carry another few feet and it's got me love elevated sea positions Go on and, that's a golf shot. Oh, superb.
How do you play that then? 126, wind off the right and the pin looks as though it's got nothing on the right hand side of it. Good luck. Yeah, not like that. I just kind of missed the green on the left in the end when the wind gets it. Yeah, I think there's a bunker down there as well. Lovely little par three though, for number five. Right, another great example of why 126 yards par three can be a real difficult hole. It doesn't have to be about length. Two bunkers pitched up on the right hand side. Again, never listen to the pro pro's advice, read the course planner. And there's a burn that runs right the way along um, in front of the green. And I knew none of that. And there is a bunker that is, we can't even see that yet, but trust me, there's a bunker there, which is where my ball is. I have a decent ball at off 10, I hit an iron, three iron. Uh, it's blind off the tee, you've got plenty of room down the right hand side of what looks like a shared fairway. But then it's pretty much blind into the green, which I'll show you in a minute or two. Um, I've got 96 in. It's one of them again, you don't want to be short, you don't want to be long. You want to be uh, heart of that green. Because there looks a fair bit of danger all around it. Well. Let's see, sit down. But it was down the left, it was on the left hand side. Maybe it was long, oh no it's not, it's, it's fine, it's actually pin high. If you carry on walking forward, I thought that was good when I hit it, but then I couldn't see it again hidden away. We got a flag and maybe why I don't know 10 12 14 foot to the left right well first of all you've got this I think it looks like a, a mo well, I don't know what you describe a moat like bunker that's protecting the right hand side of this green and I think I've probably just come in off the camber which seems to be uh, it's a little closer than I was expecting it to be in terms of where I was left for the flag plenty of movement in the green again on your short iron in hand but there's plenty of chance to get you running off into all kinds of trouble um, and some fun with some pin positions, I would imagine. Now then, this is, yeah, it's another birdie chance. But um, I haven't managed to do much in terms of holding these as yet, throughout the whole series. Has that got a chance? Has that got a chance? Has that got a chance? Oh, do you know what? I've done that so many times in terms of shave the hole. And I think that was about pace, didn't it? It firm enough and died off to the left. So another par on the card. Ah, right, well listen, read your course planner because I've got incredibly lucky here. I am literally a two or three foot away from being back down into another burn that sweeps right the way around this hole, uh, seventh hole. See if I can make the most of it. Kick round. Oh no, it hasn't. Ah, oh, distance was right, just a little bit misread. I thought that'd kick off the left to right, but um, we've got a put for par, and it could have been so much worse.
fair to say the viewpoint off 12th green is pretty spectacular. You can see for miles, and again Bass Rock, North Berwick over the other side, Gullen and all those other famous courses on the uh, East Lothian coastline. Right, if you like an elevated sea position, then uh, there's an absolute belter here, old 14. Um, we're playing 171 down the hill. Green sits, um, you can see a, um, I don't know, four, five, maybe six bunkers, huge hillock between us and the flag, great backdrop. I'm gonna go eight iron, I'm not sure what this wind is doing. Uh, the flag looks still, but I can hear it amongst the trees there. Oh, that's not good. Sit down, ball. Sit down. Uh, it's okay. It's bunker right, but not the best of shots. Well, it took me till the 16th hole to listen to the pro and get the uh, course planner out. I did that, realised there was a burn, took three iron off the tee into the breeze, and I've got away with it by the skin of my teeth. I almost wished I took driver. But anyway, it's an interesting little uh, dog leg. It's very short hole. Um, right to left dog leg and we're just going over that still over the kind of uh, nib of that mound that could be good and that's right on it he's got the legs oh that could be good listen to your pro always listen to the advice of your professional well, I come up short, there's a stiff breeze up there and uh, it's probably playing, well it's a good club at least, and, uh, but I have got that birdie chance. I think it's an opportune moment for you to actually stop, pause the video right now and comments down below, does he make the birdie on 16 or not? And I'll tell you now, it's not the easiest thing to read, so maybe go for no, he doesn't. Right, we'll be back off pause. Come on, and you can do it. It's probably the most difficult birdie putt I've had today, to be fair. Oh, I thought I'd finished off with a beauty. Not quite, just a little bit short. Can I give myself this one? If I get it close enough. Ah, do you know what? I think I can. That's not a bad way to finish. Another great day. London Lynx, Fife. Scotland's less obvious.